Tay. Welcome to Kim Williams Everything. Today we're part two of the Cam SP015. We're going to look at the software. It's pretty simple. You launch it and you log in with admin and the default password is admin. Very hard to figure out. Uh, the register button, you probably don't want to do that. It'll let you register it through a Chinese website. Um, so if you want Chinese have an access to your camera, go through the registration. If not, you know, pick your language. <coughs> and log in. Uh, always check keep password, you can change it later on. Uh, initially you cannot until you log in the software and the software is a big disappointment, you're gonna see that in a second. But uh, anyway, so what we'll do here is we will log in and we're in. As you can see from the software, pretty simple. Uh, this is the main program, not a lot of features and so that's the bad part. You can see on the right hand side, or like the left hand side, I have a couple cameras and the reason I have a couple of these guys is because when I'm inside my network, I need one. When I'm outside, I have an outside IP address, and the third one is because the outside one doesn't work half the time. And that's where the disappointment comes in. Um, configuring it is very simple. Getting it to stay configured, impossible. So the software is pretty much, um, I don't want to say junk, but it's poor. Uh, features, very few. Uh, here's how you set it up. Uh, if you click on your camera, or you add, do an ad, you'll get this. Um, where you can set up your wireless, wired, um, uh, DHCP, that kind of thing. And it's basic, but um, the Wi-Fi stuff is simple. The IP addressing, the DHCP seems to lose its settings continuously, and that's very sad. But so anyway, let's lo try launching the camera. And uh, actually, I've gone through the setup again and again and again and again. Every time I use it, I have to redo the setup. Uh, to get to work. But other than that, the camera, I mean, it does a pretty nice picture. As you can kind of see, uh, it's got some dots that it was raining. So you see some uh, splotches there. But um, there's basically three settings. Uh, low definition, standard definition, high definition. Here's kind of the pan, tilt, zoom part. Um, you can see that works okay. Um, you can't see the little, little pan, tilt, zoom thing. But it's kind of jerky as it goes along. But it does work. Um, there's some other buttons on there. Focus and zoom don't work at all, and that's a big disappointment. You thought a pan tilt zoom would zoom, it does not zoom. But than that, I mean, it does uh, pan around. Uh, works fairly well. High definition seems like even uh, internal network. It's not too laggy. I'm uh, 800 miles away, going through the internet through hotels, so it's kind of a little little jerky, but that's okay. But um, and uh, for what it is, it's okay. Uh, the, the disappointment about this the software is there's no web interface. It's all RTSP. So you have to use their software or you can use another software. Um, the software that comes with it, it can do recording, but you have to hit a button. There's no automatic uh, like features that, that like a normal camera would have where you can say, hey, if there's motion in this area, start recording. doesn't exist here. It's basically you're looking at it or you're not looking at it. Or you have to manually click on the record button and record non-stop all the time. Uh, probably what, to, what you don't want to do. Um, but other than that, I mean, it, it does what it says it does. Um, you can see the chickens down there doing chicken stuff. But uh, just just disappointing software. Uh, the fact that there's no web interface, uh, very, very limited. You're stuck using their software. You can use iSpy. Um, I found that we'll use an iSpy. Uh, open source uh, recording program, fantastic program. Oh, unfortunately, uh, the pan tilt zoom does not work within the software. At least I've not been able to get to work. I'm gonna try playing with that some more. I, that that would be one option where you can get to actually do recording. Um, uh, most most uh, cameras have a web interface and it does all of its uh, uh, motion and stuff recording through that. But this unfortunately does not. And you can see at the top here. It did get the date and time right. Uh, usually it's off by an hour. There's no way to change it. Uh, a lot of times you say it says 1 1 10, 2010, not the right date. Um, so I'm assuming it somehow gets it from your PC. Maybe, I don't know, but it seems like it's hit or miss. Sometimes it's, you know, it's 2010, and a lot of times the, the clock's wrong. Um, but, you know, like I said, it's, uh, it does work. Uh, but. You can see we're zooming around, looking around, up and down, and that all works fine. See, it's a little jerky. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm about 800 miles away. Even uh, internal, you get a little bit of a, you know, every time you click the button, that's what it moves. There's no smooth um, 
you know, like a, a, if you ever played with Axis cameras, <clears throat> you can kind of uh, hit with your pointer and it'll kind of go where you want. You have to use their, their little uh, clicky thing, which doesn't show up down here because it's kind of like a separate window. But um, I don't know. Uh, I, I wanted to like this camera, and the fact that you know pan tilts or the zoom doesn't work. Uh, I see the pan and tilt works fine. Uh, there is no web interface. That's basically a showstopper. The um, you have to use their software. That's a definitely showstopper. Um, you know, you just can't open up a web interface somewhere out in the world and go to that camera. Um, so that's bad, very bad. And that's kind of what I want. I want to be able to just go on any kind of a device where I'm at. If I want to bring up the camera, take a look at it, log into it, it doesn't work that way. And so, I, you know, it would be hard to recommend this camera. If you've only had one camera and you're going to sit in your house and look at it and you don't want to do a lot of recording uh, or like motion recording, uh, that's fine. Um, it does have uh, infrared illuminators and those work really well. Um, it does light up everything it's looking at so that, that, that works really, really nice. Uh, they have like a, a faint uh, red glow to them so you kind of, if you look up at the camera you'll see that it is on. So I, I kind of like that, that feature. I've seen other cameras where you don't really see the infrared illuminators. Um, I'm not going to show any night pictures, but uh, you kind of get the idea just by looking at the, the quality of this. And this is the high definition part of it. Uh, the low definition is very low. The standard definition is uh, lower. Uh, I did some bandwidth tests on this, and uh, the high definition is doing like 1.1, 1.2 meg, and I was peaking up to 2 meg, so that's not too bad. And like I said, that's across the internet. Uh, I'd like to do maybe some tests uh, internal the network, which uh, I'm more interested in external because uh, you know, sometimes you're worried about how much bandwidth you're using, especially if your internet connection has a limit on it. Um, but I don't know. It's difficult to recommend this camera. The, uh, the limited software, um, the fact that uh, the pan tilt zoom or the zoom doesn't work, and you would think that it's marketed as a pan tilt zoom. Even if those, I know it's a digital zoom, it still should be able to zoom in somehow. Uh, those buttons just seem like they don't work. And um, <clears throat> the focus, there's some focus buttons. Those do nothing. And uh, you kind of see on the left hand side, I'm clicking on some of the cameras. But like I said, the fact that I, had, I also had to make uh, two different cameras, one for internal and external, that's okay. Uh, but the fact that they don't keep the settings uh, continuously, every time you launch the software, it, it will not connect the camera. You have to go in, you have to fiddle with it, re-add settings. And uh, it's frustrating. I think if you've never had a camera before, you'd be uh, uh, disappointed. Uh, well, but, you know, like I said, once you get it working, uh, not too bad. You can see at the bottom is record. You can add a camera and full screen, and that's it. That is it. Um, but, you know, it's, it does work. I'm probably going to keep it. Um, uh, I'd like to do recording with this, but, you know, you want motion recording. You want something so, hey, it's see some motion that records it. You know, Mr. Raccoon's in the backyard. I want to catch him. Uh, I don't need to record 24-7. Uh, that's kind of useless for me, and that's kind of where this camera is. But uh, other than that, you know, the quality, yeah, it is what it is. It's a $60, $70 camera. I've seen them listed for $100 something. Uh, definitely a, anything over $60, I definitely would never, never buy this. Uh, $60, I don't know, it's a tough call. Um, like I said, the quality's okay. But I don't know. Uh, the, their software is just this terrible. And so anyway, should you buy this camera? No, do not buy this camera. Uh, maybe some of the other cameras, higher end ones have web interface, but this one does not uh, avoid it. Avoid it, avoid it. I hate to say that, but uh, it seemed like it would be good, but it is not.